Hey everybody, Chris here. In today's crypto news, Ethereum leads the bulls. NFT trading drops. When $10 ADA. The Binance domain name fiasco. And a kitty spoils a Bitcoin node. Those stories and more in today's video. As always, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when my new videos come out and when I'm doing live streams. And I always appreciate the support. So let's get into the news. We'll start by looking at the Bitcoin chart. And here is the big rise we had overnight. Uh, big, big gains. Bitcoin coming up over 22,000. And now we're seeing a little bit of settling coming back just below 22,000. I think this was all led by Ethereum. Ethereum up 10% uh, over the past 12 hours. Uh, this is a big gain by Ethereum following the gain that it had a couple days ago. So Ethereum trading very strong. We'll get into that in a minute. And Dogecoin was just at 666. It had come up to 673. And we're seeing a red candle coming back down. So that was a big run overnight. And now we're seeing uh, this come down a little bit. So what is going on here? I think our first story is Ethereum. The Ethereum network saw an influx of 131 whales as the price recovers. Uh, so on-chain analytics firm Sentiment reports an addition of 131 whales to the Ethereum network in recent weeks, alongside the recovery in the ETH price in July. Been an increase in the number of addresses in the range of 1,000 to 100,000 ETH. I wish I had 100,000 ETH. That would be very nice. Uh, amid the increase in the number of large holders, the Ethereum network also faced an increase in small holders as the number of addresses holding slightly more than one ETH reached an all-time high of over 1.5 million wallets. So what is going on with Ethereum? Well, we have Ethereum outperforming Bitcoin. Uh, and here is uh, here's Ethereum here coming back up on this chart. Uh, so what's going on? In the past week, Ethereum's ninth shadow fork went live as the network continued to test its upcoming transition from proof of work to proof of stake. The shadow fork advances work on the upcoming upgrade to the Ethereum mainnet coming later this year. The third and final testnet merge, Gorley, is planned for the following month. So good news for Ethereum and actually what that is doing, because Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency. Uh, when it has positive gains, it also can move the entire crypto market. And we saw early this morning that the whole crypto market was just about at one trillion dollars again. So so good trading overnight for Ethereum and cryptos. However, NFTs. Not so well. The monthly NFT trading volumes fell 74% from May to June. So uh, you know me, I did not get into any NFTs. Uh, I still think it's way too early for this. Uh, I think it was a big bubble last year and a lot of people buying these NFTs at these huge prices. Some people have made money on it, but I think a lot more people are holding bags, big bags in NFT. Uh, and I'm just not, uh, I'm not getting into it. Monthly trading volumes for non-fungible tokens fell 74% between the months of May and June, according to data compiled by Block Research. May saw $4 billion in volume, while June was just over $1 billion volume. The 74% decrease is the largest month-over-month -month decline in NFT marketplace trading volume to date. OpenSea dominated the market in June with 696 million. So they had about 70% of the entire market of NFTs. Uh, despite having compromised the majority of NFT trading volume amid the NFT market downturn, OpenSea announced on July 14th, it's gonna downsize its workforce by 20%. So they're having job cuts. I think everyone sees that things are really slowing down when it comes to these kinds of things. Uh, next, when $10 ADA, Cardano predicted to end the year trading less than a dollar despite the Vasil upgrade. So a group of experts has predicted that Cardano will close the year at 63 cents. So where is Cardano right now? 
Ah, uh, 48 cents. Trading right at 48 cents. It just about hit 50 this morning and trading back down right around 48 cents. So what's going on here? Well, there was a group of panelists that a cross-section put together uh, to, to look at a prediction of, of Cardano. And they thought that, that the native token ADA, the short-term predictions were far from optimistic. Average respondents touting ADA to close the year at less than a dollar. Charles Silver, CEO of Permission.io, puts his hypothesis for 2022 at 20 cents. On his belief, there's no use case for Cardano. Alex Nagorski saying ADA is not an asset worth holding. He makes a sub $1 prediction. However, Matt Lobel of Plain says the asset could climb to $1.50, with Martin Fuhrer of Morpher making a similar call despite their optimism for the asset. ADA will either make the world's most decentralized blockchain, said Router, or it's not going to do anything. So there's, there will be no middle line. That's kind of how people think about ADA. As ETH 2.0 nears, which is the merge, the respondents believe it could adversely affect Cardano. The switch to proof of stake has been touted to make Ethereum scalable and cheaper, while Cardano might continue to play second fiddle. Cardano is inching towards the Vasil hard fork, a significant network upgrade designed to improve the network's performance. Typically, a hard fork is followed by a spike in an asset price, but the panelists remain split over what effect that that is going to have. Uh, next story, this is, uh, this is Binance. Now, Binance is CZ, and I don't think CZ personally is involved in this, but Binance is CZ called out for allegedly harassing a domain name owner. So what is going on? Uh, in a major Twitter thread, developer CryptoFelon has claimed that CZ is harassing him with a hostile takeover. According to him, Binance founder and CEO CZ is attempting to rob him of his domain. The issue actually stretches back to November 2021 and recently surfaced again because his domain name got locked. Uh, so what's going on? Well, it looks like that he first... Uh, was contacted by Binance. This is the domain name owner, CryptoFelon. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the domain name is, but I think it's Binance.ca, which is the Canadian version of Binance, because you go to Binance.ca and you get some weird things. Uh, the issue he claimed began in November 2021, when Binance executive Min Lin allegedly contacted him. Min Lin offered a proposal to acquire his domain. But CryptoFelon de demanded 420 ETH. After a couple of days, Binance then issued a cease and desist letter against him over trademark infringement allegations. Now, I know that I've, I've traded domain names, and typically you only, you only give up the domain name if you, if you bought it after a, a company's name is trademarked or is or is you know, well in use. So if this guy owned this domain name from before Binance became a big thing, he's probably okay with keeping the, the domain name if it is indeed Binance.ca. Uh, however, if he recently bought it, we could have a UDRP, which is basically the, the company goes to this independent uh third party in order to uh, make a determination of whether the domain name can just be transferred directly to Binance. Because Binance, you know, whether they have a trademark on the name Binance or how that works, domain name domain names, you, you really don't trade in them if they are popular names. You stay away from them uh, because these things can happen. So this guy's calling out CZ, and it's probably not CZ directly. It's probably the Binance company that's kind of taken care of this. But if they ha if he does have Binance.ca and Binance wants it, Binance will probably end up getting it, uh, typically how these work. But again, it depends on how long he's had it and what he's using it for. Uh, if I go to uh, if I go to Binance.ca. We end up with this, B-I-N-A-N-C-E 
be in an or around circa and common era. This is what it says. I don't know what this is. And, and again, I don't know exactly that this is the domain name, but it certainly isn't related to the crypto trading platform Binance. And finally, we have this story on Cointelegraph, Biddy Kitty, a cat spoils a Bitcoin node during price crash with dirty protest. The story of one Bitcoiner's cat that sought to disrupt the decentralized network with a dirty protest. So a Bitcoin node is a pivotal piece of the Bitcoin protocol. For bad actors, attacking nodes and bringing them offline is a sound strategy to undermine the network's resilience. For one British Bitcoiner, such an attack took place as the actions of his feline friend rendered his Bitcoin node unreasonable. Bodleholder, he wishes to remain anonymous, he told Cointelegraph that he started running Raspberry Pi as Umbrella Node January 2021. He wished to contribute to the overall decentralization of the Bitcoin network. Below is a picture of the node in question before the attack. So it looks nice and clean, right? Notice the air vents on the node, crucial element of the saga. The node ran smoothly since connection, confirming Bitcoin blocks on average every 10 minutes as per the difficulty adjustment. However, in late May 2022, when the price began to tumble under 30,000, Bodle went to log into the node for the first time in a while. It couldn't be found on the network. So I pulled it out from behind the sofa, only to discover it was covered with a crusty layer of baked on cat sick. To his horror, Bodle discovered that his large black cat Pablo had vomited on the Bitcoin node. The dirty protest had affected the node's ability to connect to the internet and run. Bodle explains, the vomit got through the vent slots and took the node offline. Indeed, if a Bitcoin node goes offline, it no longer contributes to the security of the network, potentially jeopardizing the Bitcoin protocol. Well, not one node would do that, but anyway, Bodle jokes that maybe Pablo mistakenly thought it was running a dog-themed shitcoin and couldn't stomach the volatility. Bodle is a Bitcoin maximalist who has no time for the likes of Doge. <laughs> Fortunately, it's also very easy to turn the node back on, catch on the missing blocks. He removed the power, plugged it back in, and luckily it powered on fine, took a few minutes to resync to add all the blocks that it had missed. So that there it is. The, those are the stories of the day. So where is the crypto trading going to go from here? Hard to say right now. Uh, still, I kind of think that we had a good bull run there and now we're going to see a retracement. Uh, that could very well be, uh, but we'll be sure to watch it during the week. And I still think in the next two weeks, there's going to be another drop. Uh, we're going to have a dip there and that's what I'm waiting for. Let me know in the comments below what you think about today's stories. As always, please be sure to give the video a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. I appreciate the support. See you next time.